In our Sunrise Smart Start, Rochester police releasing new information in a recent homicide investigation. Police have now arrested and charged 32-year-old Joseph Scott with murder and two counts of second-degree criminal possession of a weapon in connection with an incident on July 24th outside of a bar on Mile Avenue. The victim, 36-year-old Derek Taylor, was found by police with a gunshot wound to his torso. Taylor was transported to Strong Memorial Hospital where he died shortly after. Scott, the alleged gunman, was taken into custody on Wednesday and arraigned yesterday in city court. Police also identifying the man shot and killed last weekend on J Street. Officials saying 42-year-old Kaylee White Sr. was shot while sitting inside his vehicle last Saturday. Currently, there are no suspects in custody and anyone with information is asked to call 911. Rochester Mayor Malik Evans speaking about violence in the city as part of a progress report to update the public on top priorities of his administration. Evans declaring a gun violence state of emergency a few weeks ago and a big concern was the North Clinton section of the city. Evans telling News 8 that even with the numbers, they are making significant progress fighting crime. Evans also saying that public safety remains one of his top concerns. He outlined a program to use $8.4 million for public safety, most of it going to violence prevention programs. And Rochester's Police Accountability Board has released its first month's report. The board recording 130 complaints when they first started accepting complaints on June 20th through July 31st. The complaint count reflects the number of people who have reached out to the board regarding Rochester Police Department policies, practices, and conduct. 20 of the 130 complaints were listed as non-actionable reports, not alleging officer misconduct. A Rochester facility is being recognized for reaching a mammoth milestone, 100 years of service. The Rochester Hearing and Speech Center provides hearing, speech, and language services to both children and adults throughout Monroe County. Yesterday, Rochester Mayor Malik Evans presented the center with a certificate to mark the occasion. As part of their 100th anniversary celebration, the center will be hosting a Roaring Twenties Centennial Gala on September 10th. And Rochester's Puerto Rican parade is scheduled for this Saturday, meaning the following roads will be closed. Starting at 8 a.m., parts of Church Street, North Fitzhugh Street, and Allen Street will be closed. Then starting at 10 a.m., parts of West Main Street, North Plymouth Avenue, and Maury Silver Way will be closed temporarily. James, are things looking good in the forecast for the Puerto Rican parade? Yeah, I think so. I think we avoid the rain. That's, that's the worst case scenario is that we have rain during the parade. Uh, likely dry, but the tough part is the heat and humidity. It's going to be a warm one at that parade. Uh, temperatures uh, by the morning time will certainly be in the 80s. That 90 degrees you see there on the weekend forecast, that happens in the afternoon. Uh, so certainly going to be hot, but manageable. Uh, so we want to stay cool for that. Sunday, uh, no uh, stranger to the heat as well. I've got as well into the upper 80s and low 90s by the afternoon. Just an isolated storm chance. When this heat pattern breaks, we'll talk about it at the end of the show. Amel? All right, James, thank you. Let's take a look at the roads again. We're still tracking that accident in Rochester on South Goodman Street, northbound, southbound at Harvard Street. And we also want to mention that the Goodman Street exit on 490 is closed for the foreseeable future, but otherwise things are looking good. In national news this morning, monkeypox officially being declared a national emergency by the federal government. This move means the government will release federal funding and resources to help fight the virus, increasing testing and treatment, while also increasing the amount of vaccines available. Reports say monkeypox is in every state except Wyoming and Montana. The CDC says that nearly 99% of cases are among men who have sex with men. And currently, the U.S. has more than 7,000 cases leading the world. Vaccines for monkeypox are available, though in some areas, professionals are stopping the administration of the second dose to ensure there is enough first doses. After months of negotiations, it appears the Democrats are closer to making President Biden's legislative priorities a reality. Washington correspondent Alexander Limon reports on what's in the package and the remaining hurdles.
Democrats say they're on the brink of passing that huge package of legislation that would make historic investments in green energy. But to do it, they'll have to lock in the vote of one last Democrat, Senator Kirsten Sinema. We're going to invest $369 billion to address the climate crisis. Soon, Democrats hope to pass far-reaching legislation containing some of President Joe Biden's top legislative priorities. Senate Democrats are delivering on historic climate change legislation. We're delivering on lower prices on prescription drugs. We're delivering on tax fairness. Republicans like Senator John Thune are highly critical of the package. I'm not really sure why the federal government is going to be spending money on electric garbage trucks or how that's going to reduce inflation. But Democrats say fighting climate change is worth the investment. This bill will cut our carbon emissions by 40 percent. Those greenhouse gases warm the planet and make natural disasters like droughts, wildfires and hurricanes worse. The Inflation Reduction Act will help us avoid the cost in both dollars and in lives. The Congressional Budget Office estimates the bill will pay for itself and reduce the deficit. It's paid for by making wealthy corporations pay more of their fair share in taxes. But Senator John Cornyn has a problem with how the legislation is being presented. The first thing is it's misnamed. It's not an Inflation Reduction Act. It's uh, at, at best, uh, it stays constant. Alexander, thank you. President Biden says these investments will be passed on to Americans in the form of lower energy bills because the package will create new high paying jobs in the green energy sector. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland announcing yesterday that federal charges are being brought against four officers who he says violated Breonna Taylor's civil rights in a 2020 house raid that ultimately resulted in her death. Allegedly, the officers in question falsified the affidavit used to obtain the search warrant for Taylor's home. The indictment also alleging the ensuing raid led to Taylor's death. And a verdict has been reached in the case of Olympic gold medalist and WNBA star Brittany Griner. Griner returned to Russian courts yesterday with her trial coming to a close, receiving a nine-year sentence in Russian prison. She was detained at a Moscow airport on February 17th with vape cartridges containing cannabis oil in her luggage. Cannabis is illegal in Russia for both medicinal and recreational purposes. Well, here's a look at what folks might be talking about at the water cooler this morning. An update now on the Bill safety duo Micah Hyde, still not participating in team drills after injuring his hip. And Jordan Poyer was on the field towards the end of practice, sporting a large brace on his arm. Coach McDermott thinks Poyer will be out for days instead of weeks, leaving the team optimistic that they'll have both for week one. You Bills fan, James? Uh, no, Devin Broncos fan, but certainly follow the Bills very closely. Uh, you, you know, that dynamic duo it made Bills top five defense in the league. A lot of people credit the loss to the Kansas City Chiefs last year uh, to uh, suffering injuries uh, to that backfield. Uh, so really important to make sure that those two guys stay healthy. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I drive by 490, go by the uh, St. John Fisher campus, mm -hmm. and I see it is always packed uh, <laughs> for that uh, practice there. So great to see that, and hopefully we can get those guys healthy. Eight-day forecast here, scattered showers and thunderstorms for this afternoon, but a lot of us going to stay dry for most of the day. There it is, a strip of 90s through the weekend and into early next week. This pattern should break by Tuesday and Wednesday. All right. Thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update is coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is next.